Jai Radha Madhava Kunjavi Hare Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hare Gopi Janna Vallabha Girivana Dari Gopi Janna Vallabha Gopi Janna Vallabha Girivana Dari <coughs> Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava <coughs> Jambihari <coughs> Gopi Janna Vallabha Girivana Dari Gopi Janna Vallabha Girivana Dari Sodanandana Braja Janna Ranjana Sodanandana Braja Janna Ranjana Sodanandana Raja Janna Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janna Vallabha Girivana Dari Gopi Janna Vallabha Girivana Dari Sodanandana Raja Janna Ranjana Ya Sodanandana Raja Janna Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare. Jaya on Vishnu Pad Panamahanksa Pravi Dagacharya Asa Tresa Trishi Shimad His Divine Grace Sila A.C. Bhakti Rantas Mami Sila Prabhupada Ki Kananda Kota Vaisnamani Ki Jaya Namacharya Sila Harida Stakura Ki Jaya Viskan Founder Acharya Sila Prabhupada Ki Jaya Prem Zika Hosa Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gidana Har Sivasthi Gaur Bhakti Amani Ki Jaya Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopinath Samakun Radha Kun Giri Gopadana Ki Jaya Sri Vrindavadam Ki Jaya Sri Maya Panabdam Ki Jaya Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Jumuna Mai Ki Jai, Tosa Devi Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Sama Veda Bhakti Vanda Ki Jai, Transcendental Book Distribution Ki Jai, Hari Nama Sankirtan Ki Jai, Gau Premanandi, All Glorious Sama Devotees, All Glorious Sama Devotees, All Glorious Sama Devotees, All Glorious Sama Devotees, Shri Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga. Getting better? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this morning we're reading the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 11. Text number 24. Aham, Hare, Tava, Padaika, Mula, Das Anudaso, Vistami, Buyaha, Mana, Zmaritashu, Pater, Gunangs te ganita vak karma kolutu kaya. Why am I? I think I'm thinking that I have to get some more glass in my. I can't see this too well. Huh? Yeah, maybe zoom it on on your phone there. Aham Hare Tava Pa oh, excuse me. Aham Hare Tava Padhaika Mula Dasanu Daso Bhavitang Subuya Manasmrita excuse me. Manasmrita su patirgunamste. 
Punitava karma kalota kaya Aham hare tava padhaika mula Dasana daso bhavitam si buya Manas maritasu patirgunam ste Gunita vakarma kurotu kaya Aham hare tava padhai kamula Dasana dhaso bhavitang si buya Manas maritasu patirgunam ste Gunita vakarma kurotu kaya Ram. Aham hare tava bhalai kamula Dasaru daso bhavitam si buya Manasmari tasu patirgunam ste Gunita vakarma kurotu kaya Rita Vabala Kamula Masana Daso Bhavitam Sibuya Rasmari Tasu Pateganam Ste Rita Vakana Kuru Tukaya Rita Vabala Kamula Dasana daso bhavitam si buya Manasmari tasu patirgunam ste Manasmari karma karoti kaya Aham I Hare O my Lord Tava of your Lordship Pada e kamula whose only shelter is the lotus feet. Das Anu Das, <coughs> the servant of your servant. Bhavitasmai, shall I become. Bhuyaha, again. Mana, my mind. Smareta, may remember. Asupate, of the Lord of my life, Gunan, the attributes, Te, of your Lordship, Gunita, may chant, Vak, my words, Karma, activities of service to you, Kurotu, may perform, Kaya, my body, Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada Ki. O my Lord, O Supreme Personality of Godhead, will I again be able to be a servant of your eternal servants who find shelter only at your lotus feet? O Lord of my life, may I again become their servant so that my mind may always think of your transcendental attributes? My words always glorify those attributes, and my body always engaged in the loving service of your Lordship. This is pretty amazing. Here's this, this person who is apparently a demon. He's, 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 he's gigantic. I mean, he's huge. 
and he's scary looking, you know? <laughs> and he's speaking these wonderful prayers. It's like amazing. Purport. This verse it gives us some in substance of devotional service. One must first become a servant of the servant of the servant of the Lord. Das Hanu Das. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu advised, and he also showed by his own example, that a living entity should always desire to be a servant of the servant of the servant of Krishna, the maintainer of the gopis. Gopi Bhartu Parakamala Yor Das Adas Anudas. This means that one must accept a spiritual master who comes in the disciplic succession and is a servant of the servant of the Lord. Under his direction, one must then engage one's three properties, namely body, mind, and words. The body should be engaged in physical activity under the order of the master. The mind should think of Krishna incessantly. And one's words should be engaged in preaching the glories of the Lord. If one is thus engaged in the loving service of the Lord, one's life is successful. Om Jnana Tamarandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksham Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Mukam Kotivata Lang Pangun Lang Hayate Gurim Yat Kripa Tadaham Bande Shri Gurum Dinataranam Vansha Kapa Turibhyascha Kripa Sandhubhyayivacha Paditanam Bhavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namo Namo Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktivin Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare This verse uh, Gopi Bhartu Parikamali or Das the Das Anadas is from the Pajavali Rupa Goswami and here we're hearing the translation that the devotee is interested in being the servant of the servant of the servant of Krishna, the lover of the gopis. Now generally people aren't very interested in being a, a servant. You know, servant's like a servant, yeah. But people are very interested in having a big position. Like Prabhupada was in uh, Japan. And he was uh, doing some business there with a, with a Japanese printing company. They were printing Prabhupada's books. And there was one, uh, they were having a meeting and then the, the, the executives left and there was one person there who was in the lower echelons of the company. And so Prabhupada asked him, so what is the goal of your life? And he very dramatically took his card from the bottom. There was a business card, a stack of business. He took his business card from the bottom and he slapped it on the top. <laughs> he wanted to be the top in the business. CEO. So generally people want to have a big position. It's like in England, there's the Lord's and the ladies, to be a lord. I think uh, Paul McCartney, he's Lord McCartney. Lord Paul McCartney. I don't know how he got it, right? I don't know how he got that, but... <laughs> yeah. So, and you know, if you pay a lot of money, you can be a lord. Yeah. If you're rich, you can become a lord. <laughs> you get this designation. So people like to have high positions. Just like now we have the presidential election coming up soon. And so many candidates are there now. Like to be the president. Yeah. Right. The big dog. <laughs> so people like this. To be a governor, a senator, 
Or even here in San Diego where they have the, the council, right? San Diego council, right? People like to have a position. But a devotee only wants to have this position. Servant of the servant of the servant of Krishna. Actually, this is the highest position. Be hard for people to understand that. <laughs> but this is actually the highest position that one could be in. To be the servant of the servant of the servant. And it's just got a hundred times removed. Servant of the servant of the servant of the servant. Just to be a servant. Is actually, it's, it's glorious. The highest position. And therefore devotees are aspiring be servants. It's like Prabhupada. Prabhupada was such a great, such a great devotee, Shaktivesha avatar. But he wanted to serve the devotees. He was, I mean, just like inconceivable. 26 Second Avenue, 1966. Actually, yeah, early 66. He was, he was cooking for all these derelicts, you know, drug users and Alcoholics is cooking for them. You know, it's like inconceivable. So humble servant. Like Bhakti Thakur, when will he says Bhakti Thakur says, well, when will I with a humble heart go out to preach your message, sublime? So this is the highest position to be a humble servant of the devotees, to be a humble servant of Krishna. Uh, they don't want these uh, designations. Like there was one devotee, Naranjana Swami, very, very nice devotee. Unfortunately, he doesn't come here. But he's a wonderful devotee. So the GBC, seeing his qualifications, they asked him, would you like to be a GBC? He said, no, no, I don't want to be a GBC. And they said, good, that's, that's a good qualification to be a GBC. <laughs> and they made, he became a GBC. <laughs> he's been a GBC now for like 22 years or something like that. And he's, he's a really, really saintly devotee and a good manager which is rare to see. Yeah. To be a nice devotee, sincere, humble, Vaishnava, gives nice classes, and a good manager. So, but he didn't want it. He didn't want that destination. He was happy just preaching. Sarva Pati Vinir Mukhtam, Tat Pratvena Nirmal, Rishikena, Rishikesa, Sevana Bhakti That devotional service means to engage our senses in the service of the master of the senses. And there's two nice side effects of this. One is to become free of all material designations. And therefore this verse says, Gopi Bhartu Padakamali or Dasa Dasa Anadasa. I don't want to be a Brahmana, I don't want to be a Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, Brahmachari, Grihastha, Vanapra, Sanyasa, I don't want it. I want to be the servant of Krishna. So this is the uh, glory of a devotee. Now there's another part of this verse which we don't very often hear. The rest of this verse goes on to say that Krishna, he is like a, an ocean of nectar. Now we know when we have some nice nectar, some real good nectar, you just want to keep drinking it. Of course our body doesn't allow to drink too much, but sometimes it's so good you just want to keep drinking it. Right. So devotional service to Krishna, and devotional service to the servants of Krishna, it's like you just want to keep serving. It's like Davida Prabhu, such a nice devotee. I'm staying with him now for a short time. And I, I take great pleasure just 
doing service for him. A nice devotee. I want to do more service. He's a little uncomfortable with this. <laughs> you know, he's a humble devotee. He doesn't, doesn't like anybody serving him. Yeah. That's another thing about it. He doesn't want anybody to serve him. Yeah. That's another thing. So devotee just wants to continue serving Krishna, serving the Vaishnavas. Yeah. Can't get enough service. And then uh, the rest of this verse goes on to say that uh, he's the cause of transcendental bliss. He's the cause of transcendental bliss. Actually, transcendental universal bliss. He's the cause of transcendental universal bliss. It's also said that he's, he's the, the reservoir of pleasure. So we connect to Krishna then we experience this bliss, this, this happiness that we're, everybody is hankering for. I was speaking to one person last night, and I said, this is the, the nature of the soul. It's three, the bliss, this is our, we want to be happy, everybody wants to be happy. Eternality and knowledge, this is, we, everybody wants knowledge. People go to school and get some knowledge. And who wants to die? Nobody wants to die. So this is the nature of the soul. But here we're, we're stuck in these bodies that are temporary. We want to live an eternal life. We're stuck in these bodies that are temporary. They're going to die. So much suffering. So much suffering in this world. And there's so much ignorance. Tamasima Joy Tiyogama says, come out of the ignorance. Come out of the darkness and go to the light. Go to the knowledge. So much ignorance in the material world. So uh, we're trying to attain this, this knowledge of Krishna. And the more we attain this knowledge of Krishna, the more we'll experience this bliss. Especially if we put it in practice. We get the knowledge, but we also have to put it in practice. Yeah. As for it's not just devotion, but devotional service. Service with devotion. Not easy. <laughs> service with devotion. Not just service. Service with devotion. And then here in the, in the purport, the end of the purport here, Prabhupada mentions that the body should be engaged in the physical activity under the order of the spiritual master. So these three things Prabhupada mentioned, the body, the mind, and he says the mind should think of Krishna incessantly, and one's words should be engaged in preaching the glories of the Lord. So this is the result of connecting to Krishna, connecting with devotees, that one wants to engage in service. There's physical service, that's what it begins with, just like when we, when we first join, we're doing mostly physical service. Our, our mind is still a little hazy, a, little, a lot of spider webs in there, a little spaced out. <laughs> but the physical activity, just like everybody's introduced to Krishna's pots when they first come. And that's good. It helps to develop that humility. Yeah. We, we need that humility. It's purifying. It's good for the mind. Yeah. Physical activity. And then as one continues on in devotional service, one is thinking of Krishna more and more. As we hear of Krishna, we chant Krishna's name, we hear, we, our mind gets purified. Yeah. And then if one is very fortunate, then they go out. And they also give this message to others. They use their words. Etavaj jama sapoyam behinam yadeyasya prana artha dhyavacha shreya acharanam So this is shreyas. This prayas and shreyas. So shreyas is this uh, ultimate benefit. Yeah. So this is what we want, but we want the highest benefit. Yeah. So by this devotional service, by engaging in service to Krishna, we get this, this highest benefit. And all we have to do is stay connected. Just stay connected. 
It's like a Mogali the Prabhu, he gave a nice example. You have a last night you have a green mango mango and you have a, a ripe mango. What's the difference? Time. Time is the difference. Yeah. So if we just stay connected, we keep chanting, of course we keep trying to increase the quality. Quality is no very most important is the quality. Trying to increase the quality. Yeah. Sometimes it's still uh, you might fall asleep. As soon as you notice you're, you're starting to fall asleep, stand up. <laughs> that helps to keep from falling asleep. Right? And where the mind's going to wander, undoubtedly, it's going to wander, so we have to keep on bringing it back. Yato yato nishchalati manas chanchalam astaram tatastato niyam yatat atman yeva samnaya Krishna says, from wherever the mind wanders, dude, it's flickering and steady nature. You've got to bring it back under control of the self. So this is a practical uh, way to to meditate on Krishna. You've got to keep on bringing it back. And then, uh, if one is, like I said, very fortunate, one will want to share this knowledge. Yeah. We want to. See, people are mostly, they're just interested in this, in prayers, just, they want immediate benefit. Yeah. It's like here we are in Pacific Beach, and you know, they got the, all these bars around you. They want some immediate pleasure, yeah. sense gratification. But then they go home and they're frustrated. They're drunk and have hangovers and... The next morning, they oh, what did I say that for? What a stupid thing, what did I say that for? You know, when you're drunk, you do stupid things. Yeah. I heard there's more, more bars per capita in this area than any place in the country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of prayers. <laughs> we got to pray for them. <laughs> pray for the prayers. <laughs> so, today... It's actually the I, I didn't mention it this morning, but today is the just is the appearance day of a very great devotee, Madhavendapuri. He's such a great devotee, so we're going to read about him. Also, Srinivasacharya, another great Vaishnava. Are you ready? Before Lord Chaitanya appeared, he sent his eternal associates like Sri Advaita Acharya, Sri Jagannath Mizar, Sachi Mata. Madhavendapuri, Ishwarapuri, to earth. Sri Madhavendapuri took initiation from Sri Lakshmi Patitirtha. Other places it said that he took initiation. Oh no, oh no, that's right, that's right. Sri Madhavendapuri took initiation from, from Sri Lakshmi Patitirtha in the Mad, Madhvacharya Sampradaya. He had many. Oh, he had many disciples, but Sri Advaita Acharya and Sri Ishwara Puri were the chief disciples of Madhavendra Puri. It's also said that Nityananda was his disciple. It's mentioned someplace. In one way or another, all the Vaishnavas in Bengal and Ketra Manila, Jagannath Puri, were connected with Sri Madhavendra Puri. After Lord Chaitanya came, many of his disciples joined Mahaprabhu Sangratam movement. Madhavendra Puri's body was completely full of design of divine love. So were his followers. He displayed uncommon love of God. Seeing a dark blue rain cloud, he would fall down unconscious. Day and night he was intoxicated from drinking the ambrosia of Krishna Prema. After making an extensive pilgrimage of Bharat Bhumi, India, he passed his life in Vrindavan and Arissa. He began the, the restoration work of Vrindavan that Sri Rupa and Sanatana Goswami continued later. Oh, he started it before Rupa and Sanatana Goswami got there. Wandering from grove to grove, remembering Radha Krishna's sweet Vrindavan pastimes, Madhavendapuri would faint in ecstasy. In a dream, Sri Gopal ordered Madhavendapuri to uncover a buried Gopal deity and install him atop Govardhan Hill. 
Madhavan Dupuri celebrated Gopal's installation with Anakuta, grand festival offering a mountain of foodstuffs to Krishna. This Anakuta festival, also called Govardhan Puja, is one of the most important Vaishnava festivals in Vrindavan, in India, and around the world. The original Gopal deity, known as Sri Nataji, is now worshipped in Natadvar, Rajasthan. Has anybody gone there before? You've been there? Oh, you were there? Wow! That's nice. You saw the deity? Wow, cool. Uh -huh. Oh, we had to go. We had to go fast. Are you thinking of Tirupati? Oh, this is okay. Wow, because the same thing in Tirupati. The Sibology, you can't. All those the Iskon devotees, they would let the Iskon devotees stay for a little. They let me stay for like like a minute. <laughs> you could darsha. Madhavendra introduced the conception of. Madhurya Bhav, conjugal love, in the Madhvacharya, the Sampradaya. Madhavendapoi is sowed the seed of Prema Bhakti. See, before he came, it was just all in reverence. You know, Lakshmi, you know, Lakshmi, Narayan worship. Madhavendapoi sowed the seed of Prema Bhakti, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became the towering tree, dropping honey, sweet fruits of Prema upon everyone. He also revealed Varaha Bhav, the mood of love relished in separation from Krishna. His branch of the Madhva sect distinguished itself by this ecstatic love of God. It is known as the Madhva Gaudi Sampradaya. In Jagannath Puri, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed an intense mood of Varaha Bhav. This increased unlimitedly when the Lord heard verses from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, Krishna Karnamrita, Gita Govinda, Pajavali, and the love poems of Chandidas and Vijapati, Mahaprabhu's Varaha begins with a single verse spoken by Madhavan Dapoy in his Param Guru, Grand Preceptor. Now it's said that only three people could understand this verse. Lord Chaitanya, Madhavendapuri and Srimati Radharani. Aidina Dayadra Natahe Matura Nata Kara Valokyase Hridayam Twad Aloka Kataram Daita Brahm Yati Kim Karotyam. O compassionate Lord of the poor and humble, O Lord of Mathura, when shall I see you again? Without seeing you, my heart has become very much afflicted. O my beloved, I am overwhelmed. What shall I do now? That's from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhulila 4, 1, 7, 1, 9, 7. Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj says that as the diamond Kaustuba jewel is the most precious among all rare, valuable jewels. This sloka is the Rasa Kavya, the best verse in the entire treasury of Rasa poetry. Actually, this verse was spoken by Srimati Radharani herself. It was Radha's pathetic cry to Shyamasundar, who had gone to Mathura, leaving her alone. Desperate in Vrindavan, Radharani's mercy brought this same verse from the mouth of Madhavendapuri. Reciting even a few words of the sloka would tear open the door of Mahaprabhu's ecstatic love, making him swoon in ecstasy, falling unconscious, feeling intense separation from Krishna. Madhavendapuri constantly chanted this verse when departing from this world. It's constantly chanting, like the Hare Krishna Mantra, just chanting this verse constantly. Amazing, huh? Krishna Das Kaviraj says that with this verse, Madhavendra teaches devotees how to achieve Krishna Prema, 
by cultivating intense feelings of separation from Sri Krishna. Gaudiya Vaishnavas accept this verse, accept that this verse expresses the essence of the mood of separation. The Gaudiya Sampradaya teaches that worship of Radha and Krishna in separation represents the highest level of devotional service. At this stage of realization, the devotee feels completely vacant in the world in the absence of Krishna. A moment without Madhava feels like a millennium. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu always swam in the ocean of Divyom Mada Mahabhav, the maddened ecstatic emotions shown by Sri Radha in Brahmar Gita. In this verse, Madhavendapuri discloses similar emotions. The Gaudiya Vaishnavas conclude that the monsoon shower of ecstatic love exhibited by Lord Gauranga during his manifest pastimes begins with Madhavendapuri. It then came through Ishwarapuri, who played the role of Lord Chaitanya's spiritual master. Madhavendapuri's samadhi is in Remuna, Arissa, near the temple of Kshira Chora Gopinath. Another thing in today is the appearance of Sri Sri Radha Raman, who is uh, deities of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. And Gopal Bhatta Goswami was an extremely, extremely exalted devotee. He's the spiritual master of Srinivasacharya, whose appearance day is today also. Very exalted devotee. So Lord Chaitanya left this world, and then Lord Chaitanya came to him in a dream and said to go to Nepal. What's the name of the river where they get these silas? Gandaki River? Yeah. So he went to Nepal upon having this dream, and he was at this, this river, and he was getting, with his lotus, he was getting some water, and 12 silas went into his lota. And he was a little surprised, so he poured him, poured him out, and he was going to get some more water, and they went back in again. <laughs> so he said, well, I guess Krishna wants me to worship him in this form, Saligram Sila. So then he went back to Vrindavan, and he's worshiping these Silas. And he was, he was renowned as a great devotee. So there was one person who came, and he, and he donated some cloth, for worshiping the deity. But he said, maybe you can give these to some of the other devotees, because I, I have silas here, they're round, you know, maybe. No, 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 he was insistent, no, 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 please. So then he prayed, Gopal Krishna, I mean, Gopal Bhatta Goswami, he prayed to, to the Lord, I, I would like to also worship you, and dress you, and, and like this. So the, 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 the next morning he, 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 he uncovered the, the deities there, and one of the twelve was Radha Raman. It's still, it's the only deity, it's still there. Most of the deities, they went to other places, Jaipur, and that's the only deity that stayed of the six Goswamis. Still there, you can, you can see, it's beautiful, it's <laughs> beautiful. I mean, it's a real, really beautiful. Did you see Radha Raman when you went to Vrindavan? And, and what's extraordinary about these deities, you can see their little teeth. <laughs> you, you usually don't see that. <laughs> Very beautiful deities. So you can see how exalted he is. He prayed to the Lord, please I'd like to worship you in the, in the form and dress you and take care of you. And he appeared like that. So he had, and then he still had the 11 silas, and then now Radha Raman. But what's in it, they're called Radha Raman, but there's no Radha. <laughs> Still, there's, there's Raman there, no Radha. <laughs> Special. So today is also the uh, appearance day of Srinivasa Joy. I will read another. I mean, <laughs> we're so fortunate to hear about these great, great devotees. After witnessing Lord Gauranga's sannyas ceremony at Katva, Chaitanya Das and his pregnant wife visited Lord Chaitanya in Jagannath Puri. Soon, quote, there's some quote here, soon your wife will give birth to 
to a son named Srinivas, said Lord Chaitanya. And through Srinivas, all the Bhakti Shastras of Rupa and Sanatana Goswami will be distributed. When his father left this world, Srinivas visited the remaining associates of Lord Goranga in Katva, Navadweep, Jagannath Puri. They blessed Srinivas and gave him valuable instructions for spiritual advancement. Seeing his absorption in Goranga Prem, they knew he was an embodiment of Gora Shakti, the energy of Sri Goranga Mahaprabhu. He came to Vrindavan, toured the Twelve Forests, and took Diksha from Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Srila Jiva Goswami taught him the complete philosophy of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Acknowledging his vast learning, Sri Jiva gave Srinivas the title Acharya. Accepting Sri Jiva's order, Srinivas and his two friends, Syamananda Prabhu and Naratam Das Nakor, pioneered the first transcendental book distribution party. The Rajabasi Sankirtan party, Ki Jai. <laughs> They took a bullet cart of the Goswami's devotional writings from Vrindavan and passed them out all over Bengal and Arissa. There's a whole pastime with this, I should probably mention, since it's pretty amazing. So 15 people went with this bullet cart. Many of them were guards, and then the, the, these uh, three great devotees. So they were almost to Bengal, and there was a, a, a king that was a, a dacoit, and he had uh, astrologers that could tell when there's some valuable treasure coming. And astrologically, they could see that there's a great treasure coming. Invaluable, just priceless treasures are coming. So the, the king, oh, very nice, very nice. He had... 200 dacoits go to get this treasure. So they were just following the, uh, the party of devotees. And then when they were, it was, they had been traveling for, actually for many months. You know, now we just fly from Vrindavan to, to Mayapur, I mean to Calcutta, but <laughs> to, to go with a bullock cart <laughs> takes a long time. So for months they were, so they were all tired. So while they were all sleeping, they came and they took the treasure. They took the, the Goswami's books. And when the devotees woke up and saw the books were gone, like, oh, God, the books, the books are gone. The books are gone. They were completely devastated. What are we going to do? What are we going to say to Jiva Goswami, who gave him this order? So they were just devastated. So Srinivasacharya, he was the leader. So he told Naratam and, and uh, Syamananda, you go preach. You know, go preach. I'll, I'll handle this. I'll try and get the books back. So his name was Virambir, King Virambir. So this king got this treasure. And before the opening, he's thinking, ah, oh, now, now I got some real some real wealth now. And then they opened it, and he was shocked. Books. Books. What kind of a treasure is this? Yeah. And then he looks a little closer. Rupa Goswami. Now, Rupa Goswami he was famous. Although there's no internet, there's no TV, there's no, he was famous all over India. So he saw that, Rupa, that Ryan Rupa Goswami was thinking, oh my God. He was, he was, although he was a dacoid, he was a thief. In India, even the thieves are a little, you know, sentimental, you know, a little devotional. <laughs> I just thought, oh my God, I've created a great sin. I've just stolen the books of Rupa Goswami. He was devastated. It felt so bad. So then it's described that, that, that Srinivasacharya came to him in a dream. He said, don't worry. It's okay. I'm going to come, and I'm going to get the books, and you'll be free of this sin. So he was very happy. You know, 
Oh, this great devotee came to me in a dream. So he was waiting for that time. So Srinivasacharya, he went to this, uh, to this place. It's called Vishnupur, name of the city. And he met one devotee there, and, and they became very friendly. So he was staying with this devotee. And this devotee said, you know, the king, sometimes he has, uh, actually daily he has Bhagavad discourses there in the palace. So would you like to go? He said, yeah, let's go. So this, the so-called pundit, he was, he was reading from the, from the Shastra. But Srinivasacharya, he's, he's an Acharya, <laughs> he's a great Acharya, he could see that. <laughs> he's not touching the essence of what he's, reading. He's not, you know, referring to Sridhar Swami and other Acharyas. So, and he expressed his, his, dis, uh, his disappointment after he gave one of his discourses. And, and the pundit was like, a little like, who are you? you know? But the king heard this conversation and the, the king said, well, maybe you would like to speak tomorrow. He said, yes, okay. He spoke for like two hours, and, and everybody was just astounded. The presentation was, even the pundit was like, I'm nothing compared to this person. <laughs> so then uh, the king spoke to him, and, and uh, he, Srinivasacharya revealed that he was looking for these books, and he said, oh, I have the books, it's okay, they're yours now. So, And what happened is he became a disciple, and the whole city, became his disciple. Such a great, great devotee. So here's just a couple more paragraphs here. Srinivasacharya initiated many disciples, Ramachandra, Kaviraj, and others, wrote songs full of bhakti, and introduced a special kirtan style. When leading kirtan, he would sometimes lose his voice from chanting so long. Some of us may have that experience. Yeah. <laughs> so. Besides his external activities of preaching and writing, Srinivasacharya practiced intensive Raganuga Bhakti, Raganuga Bhajan. Raganuga Bhajan is the spontaneous internal worship of Radha and Krishna based on the mood and sentiments of the eternal residents of Sri Vrindavan Dham, such as the gopis. While doing Manasi Seva, he would often bring tangible paraphernalia from these meditations back with him upon returning to external consciousness. Once Srinivas sat Lord Gauranga on a jeweled throne within his mind. And then he worshipped the Lord with a golden-handled chamara whisk and a five-flower garland. Pleased with his service, Gora Roy offered the garland back to Srinivasacharya who then immediately awoke and lost the meditation. A, surpri a surprised Srinivas found the sweetest flower garland he ever smelled hanging around his neck when he returned to external consciousness. So you got that picture? He's in a dream. And the Lord appears. And he gives this garland to the Lord. And then the Lord gives it back to him. And now he wakes up and he's still got the garland. Physically. <laughs> like, whoa. In the most fragrant flower garland there is. Another time, Srinivas was in his Siddha Swarup as Mani Manjari, watching Srimati Radharani, Sri Krishna, and the gopis in Holy Leela, joyful, joyfully throwing colored powders and dyes at each other. The gopis told Mani Manjari to supply colors to Radhika and side with them in their war against Siam. It was a color war. The earth shook from their furious battle. Wow, the earth shook. Srinivas's meditation ab abruptly broke. His body was completely covered from head to toe with fragrant and exotic rainbow-colored powders imported from the spiritual world. Wow. Ecstatic, huh? Srinivasacharya Samadhi is in the Dira Samira Samadhi's area. 
Fina Sachaya Ki Jai, Madhavendapuri Ki Jai. Is there any questions or comments anybody would like to make? Yeah. Maybe, but we don't have it. <laughs> he has a question. Yeah, based on what you were talking about, you uh, my first question is, you said quality. To you, what, is, what would you define to you? What yeah. is quality? The quality of chanting the holy name. Sometimes when people are chanting the holy name and they're chanting to, to get something, or uh, it's inattentive, or we're chanting and we're, we're maintaining material desires. So this is not high quality. High quality means that we're chanting with only one desire, to serve Krishna. This is called uh, pure chanting. Okay. Quali high quality chanting. We're chanting just to please Krishna. Okay, this, this brings me to my next question. What is what is even higher than Krishna? Nothing is higher than Krishna. Yeah, there is. What is? Devotional service. <laughs> <laughs> well, devotional service brings us to Krishna. Yeah, even the scriptures say that devotional service surpasses Krishna. That anybody who starts devoting with service, even Krishna has to submit to that. <laughs> Anybody else have a question or a comment? Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.